Presence detection. What exactly is it and how does it work? Well, presence detection is commonly used in home automation to control lighting and appliances based on whether your home or a certain room is occupied. There are a variety of methods for detecting presence, each with its own set of pros and cons, and today we'll be looking at setting up presence detection for your home in Home Assistant. This will be a two-part video to help keep the length to a minimum. And if this seems interesting to you, stick around and let's go. When it comes to home automation, your home must be smart enough to detect when it is occupied. And at the time of recording, there are already 67 integrations in Home Assistant that can help in this regard, which are typically classified into two types, those that monitor your Wi-Fi network and those that monitor your GPS. If you are watching this, you know that presence detection and activity event classification are possibly the most difficult things to get working with a reasonable amount of reliability. And in many cases, it simply comes down to trial and error as a variety of factors are at play here. There are many devices that can be used, such as BLE beacons, Wi-Fi, or GPS on your phone, and wearables like watches, but they all have a few things in common. They require you to carry a dedicated electronic device, they suffer low detection accuracy, and are prone to false alarms. To get around some of this, you can add these devices to a group or even add motion detectors to the mix to help with reliability. But I believe the most promising option is the Bayesian integration introduced in Home Assistant 0.53. It is derived from Thomas Bayes' theorem and defines the likelihood of an occurrence based on prior knowledge of conditions that may be relevant to the event. This YouTuber may not know me because I am a new channel, but it is a current and well-explained video on the Bayesian integration. And if you want to learn more about it, head over to Smart Home Maker's channel, which is linked below. Another major challenge with presence detection is a time issue because most integrations utilize an API that only pulls devices at defined intervals. This can result in you entering a dark room before Home Assistant even notices you are there. Having said all of that, one of the most typical detection methods will be to use your phone and the Home Assistant companion app. So let's start there. Simply go to the companion app's getting started instructions, which is provided below. This procedure is straightforward and well explained. If you accept the permissions required for location access after after installing the app, a device tracker and sensor entity will be established for the phone, allowing these detection methods to be leveraged by Home Assistant via the app, which also should now show up in your Home Assistant instance. And as you can see, that tracker and sensor is picking up my location and setting my status to home. And we can see that in the configuration under Devices and Services and clicking on Entities. From the mobile app, we're seeing my cell phone come in. So let's talk about the types of trackers that we can find. Bluetooth will employ devices such as Raspberry Pis and ESP devices to scan for Bluetooth MAC addresses. And depending on the size of your house, one device may be sufficient. However, you will most likely need numerous devices to capture your location, especially if you want to create automations for your home's various areas. Some possibilities include Bluetooth Low Energy Beacons, also known as BLE, such as the iBeacon, Eddy Stone Beacons, or Tile. There are others on the market, such as the beacons I'm eager to try from a company called Gao RFID. When it comes to Wi-Fi, checking whether devices are connected to your network is usually the simplest approach to detect presence. Also, Wi-Fi has a larger range than Bluetooth, so it may already cover your entire home. However, you must constantly have your phone's Wi-Fi connection turned on, and you lose the option to set up automations for particular rooms unless you want to add Wi-Fi access points all over, but that can get expensive really fast. If your router is supported, you may use what it already knows to determine whether or not people are home with some of Home Assistant's presence detection integrations. Don't worry, if your router isn't supported, Home Assistant can still find your Wi-Fi connected devices in other ways. One we've already talked about, which is the Home Assistant Companion app. Another alternative is Nmap Tracker. Nmap can directly scan the network for devices. Keep in mind that newer smartphones typically turn off Wi-Fi while inactive. As a result, trackers like this may be unreliable on their own. Ping ICMP 
is yet another alternative which sends ICMP echo requests using a ping. This is handy when devices operate a firewall and block UDP or TCP packets yet react to ICMP requests like the Android phones. To be effective, your devices must be configured to use static IP addresses. And finally, there's GPS. When I'm not at home, I use GPS on my phone, primarily the Google Maps platform with location sharing enabled to tell Home Assistant where I am. This enables some really powerful zone automations, often known as geofencing. Home Assistant can now detect when you're at the grocery store, at school or the office, and give it the power to monitor when you're on your way home and evaluate if the heating or air conditioning should be turned on before your arrival, or any other routines you can think of. As I briefly mentioned before, there are various methods to accomplish presence detection with Home Assistant. However, using these devices individually does prove to be a bit unreliable. So you can create groups to make it more powerful while providing a more consistent experience. Finding sensors in a group gives your system redundancy. So if one tracker goes down, another will still report that you are at home. Let's take a look at how we can get a group entered into our configuration. You can do this one of two ways. You can either use the file editor or the Studio Code server. I'm gonna go into it through Studio Code server. So once you load it up, just find your groups.yaml. And when you're in your groups.yaml, we're going to create a group. The name for this group can be anything you want. I'm just going to use my username. This is optional, but we can provide a name for that group. And I forgot a space. There we go. And then we just list the entities that we want to track. my cell phone. I don't have any other entities installed, so I will just give this example just so you have a better understanding. And that's what it would look like for your groups. We also touched on a few integrations used to detect presence. But if you look at Home Assistant's integrations page under presence detection, you can find a number of possibilities, 67 to be exact. Test them out and see what works for you. If you are unfamiliar with MQTT, check out the hookups video linked below to get a deep dive on the topic, as this is going to be the presence integration that we are going to do. So that said, I have a bunch of ESP8266s and ESP32 boards lying about, so I went with an MQTT room presence integration, originally using ESP32 MQTT room, but it has since been deprecated, and I've wanted to update what I've been using, so I've chosen to install ES presence on my lab before migrating it over to my production system. If, however, you have a number of Raspberry Pis, which currently are nearly impossible to get a hold of, I can highly recommend you check out Room Assistant. Either way, the first thing we're going to have to do is make sure that we have an MQTT broker installed. I've already gone ahead and installed this on my lab instance. But for you, to simply add it, just go over to the configuration under add-ons and in the add-on store, and you can just type MQTT and there's the Mosquito Broker. So when you load that up, yours will say install right here. Go ahead and click install and just wait for it to finish installing. After it has installed, we will need to start the add-on, which yours will say start here. Just go ahead and click start and then you're gonna wait for it to configure. You can check the status of it by hitting the log button. You click here and at the bottom, you can just hit refresh until it is up and running. Another thing you may want to enable is the watchdog so that if your MQTT broker does crash, Home Assistant will automatically restart it. For breaking changes, I always leave all of my integrations auto update on off because I like to read whether or not my configuration is going to break if something has changed. Now that the broker has been started, we need to add a new user for MQTT to use. This user does not need to be an admin and there are two reserved names that cannot be used, which are Home Assistant, all one word, and Add-on. 
In order to add a user, we will just go to Configuration, People and Zones, and then click on Users. If you are not seeing the option to add a new user down here, you have to select Advanced Mode in your Home Assistant profile. To get there, just click on your name down here and scroll down and you see Advanced Mode. Just make sure that it is selected on. So now let's go back and add our user. The username I'm going to choose is just going to be MQTT user. And I'll choose a strong alphanumeric password. As I said, I will not make it administrator. And then hit create. Now all that's left for us to do is to configure the new integration. Home Assistant should have auto-discovered it, so all we have to do is select it and check the box to enable MQTT discovery. You should have a notification here that's saying that it found a new device. If you don't, that's not a problem. You can go back to the configuration and go back to Devices and Services and look for it in the integration list. Sorry for all the integrations that you do see here. There are a number of other people here and it's just picking up their devices. Yours won't be as crowded or shouldn't be as crowded. So here we can see it's discovered MQTT. So we just click on configure. Do you want to configure Home Assistant to the MQTT broker provided by the add-on Mosquito broker? And that is what we installed. So we will just hit submit. And finally, we can make sure that it is working with a program called MQTT Explorer. If you're familiar with an API called Postman, MQTT Explorer is very similar in that we can publish and subscribe to topics to ensure our broker is working. So let's just go ahead and open that up. So if you head over to this webpage, mqtt-explorer.com, which is provided below, and just scroll down to the download section. Install the appropriate version to the operating system that you are running. Now all we have to do is open up MQTT Explorer. We're gonna add a new connection and give it the IP address of our Home Assistant MQTT server. The username which we put in was mqtt-user strong alphanumeric password that we chose. And then hit connect. So now we are connected. So let's subscribe to a topic. We'll just call it test topic. And we'll start listening. Go back over. will publish to that test topic. And when we hit publish, we should see something dump show up down here. Perfect. It is working. This is where I leave you in this video. Please check out part two where I go into setting up ES Presence and we try out a few automations to see it working. And if you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you. I hope you discovered something useful today and I'd love to hear your questions, thoughts or concerns in the comment section below. And I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.